All right, with that second learn bug fixed, I think we can get back to uh, what, what we were working on, this um, analysis of data. So we were looking at the uh, PCA projection of um, the each daily data point, treating, treating each of the 1,600 days as their own data point with uh, 24 observations. And instead of dense, this should be full, I believe, and we should get the transform. So um, now what we can, what we have is a uh, two-dimensional, uh, a two-dimensional projection of the original data. This is 1,600 points in two dimensions, and what we can do is um, plot the uh, plot these against each other um, to to see what they look like. So let's look at a scatter plot of x2 colon zero and x2 colon 1. And so what's interesting here is that we see in this data set when we do the, when we do the um, dimensionality reduction that we have two distinct types of days. They're really like these two branches in here. So um, there's certain days in this cluster and certain days in this cluster. And um, it'd be nice to be able to kind of automatically identify those clusters. One, one way we can do that is um, to use something called a Gaussian mixture model. So let's do from xklearn.mixture import Gaussian mixture and um, gm equals Gaussian mixture. We want to do two clusters here and let's do a, a label actually gmm.fit of our full x data and let's say the labels equals gmm.predict of the x data. And so that now we have uh, labels that are basically zeros and ones telling us whether we're in the z one cluster or the other. So going back to the scatter plot right here, let's take this and do uh, label uh, color equals labels and um, plt dot color bar will give us that. So now, yeah, so this is nice. We've automatically identified the two clusters. Um, I don't like the black and white here. Let's do cmap equals rainbow. And that's pretty nice for a discrete, discrete point. So we have the purple cluster and the red cluster that, um, that are slightly different. Okay, so one, one thing we might want to do is um, examine what's going on within each of these clusters. So... Um, what we can do is, is ask for just the portion of the data. Um, let's see, pivoted.shape. We want to do um, pivoted.t, and we want to know where labels equals zero. So this would be the purple cluster. And um, we'll transpose it again and then do plot. Uh, and remember, legend equals false. This is the thing we did before where we plotted a lot of um, a lot of lines. Um, so this is you know, similar similar to down here. We do a plot with the legend equals false and a, and a small alpha. And so for the purple cluster we see that what we have is this kind of commute pattern, these morning bike rides and these afternoon bike rides. Uh, we can do a similar thing for the other cluster for label equals one and see what kind of rides are in that cluster. So in that cluster, we have the more like the, the non-commute rides where people are going riding in the early afternoon um, and not really in the morning. So this is interesting. We've uh, just from the data itself, we've, we've managed to separate these into two clumps that, sh that in the purple show commute times and in the red show, show non-commute days. So you'd probably expect that these, uh, these right here would be weekdays, Monday through Friday, and these right here would be weekends, maybe Saturday and Sunday. So let's take a look um, at whether that's the, the case. So um, the columns of the pivoted, pivoted thing show the, show the days, and we want to be able to convert these dates to days of week. So the, the best way to do that is to do pd.datetimeindex. So we're converting this into a date time, um, a date time index. And the nice thing about that is that this has an attribute day of week that actually gives the day, day of the week for each of those dates. So that's pretty nice. Pandas lets you do that. Let's, let's go back to this scatter and color bar and copy this code and, um, 
And uh, actually, let's let's save this as uh, day of week just for a shorthand. And we're going to do the color is the day of week, and we'll see what that looks like. Oh, I didn't I didn't execute that. Here we go. Yeah, so here's the day of week, and you can see that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, these are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, are kind of in this cluster right here. And Saturday and Sunday, 5 and 6, the red and orange tend to be in this cluster. And, and along with the Saturday and Sunday um, points there, there are some others, some weekdays, Monday through Friday, that fall in there as well. So um, just, just to see what, uh, what these are, Let's um, let's take a look at this again. I'm gonna I'm gonna say dates equals this, and uh, what do we want? We want the dates where the label is equal to one. Is that right? Because label equals one is this this weekend thing, and we want the dates where um, where the day of week is less than five. Right. So these are the day of weeks zero through four right there. And we can see what these are. And, I, and label is undefined. Did I call it labels? Yeah, I did. So this is, uh, yeah, so this, these are all the days that are non-weekends that look like non-commute days. And the cool thing is you can recognize here, like here is Thanksgiving week, here's Christmas week, right? Here's the 4th of July, here's Christmas again, here's Labor Day, 4th of July, holiday, Christmas. So it's, it's basically the, uh, the holidays during the year. So just by counting bikes going across the Fremont Bridge, we've managed to identify... Um, all the all the holidays, the days where people don't work. Um, one that's interesting right here is this uh, two six, so February six, twenty seventeen. And you might think, you know, what what holiday is that? But if you are a Seattleite, you probably remember that as the uh, let's see, Seattle February six, twenty seventeen weather. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. So here's the Seattle Times article. Heavy snowfall uh, closes schools, complicates commute, knocks out power. So if you are someone from Seattle, you probably recognize that as the big blizzard of early 2017. And that's why people were not commuting on their bikes to work, because there was a f uh, six inches of snow on the ground, which, funnily enough, is, is able to shut down Seattle. So this is just a nice quick analysis, and I'm going to do uh, one more video in this series, and in that last video I think we're going to take a look at um, cleaning up this analysis a little bit, as we did with the last one, saving some of the tools that we think are useful, and, uh, and writing some unit tests on that. So thanks for watching.